Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to continue our conversation talking about linear relationships. Uh, and as you might remember that we have focused over the last little while on linear relationships written in the form y equals the rate of change times x plus the initial value, where y is a dependent variable. The rate of change is found by um, using rise over run. The x is an independent variable, and the initial value is found by looking at where the relationship starts. Um, and we've been using this to model linear relationships uh, in that are represented by real life situations, or that are used to represent real life situations. And now we're kind of switching our focus over to a little bit of a mathy representation of the line, which is y equals mx plus b. y and x remain the independent and dependent variables. But now instead of calling it rate of change, we call it the slope, uh, which is m. And instead of calling it the initial value, we call it the y-intercept, which we use um, with the letter to represent, um, to be represented by the letter b. Now there's always some questions about where, why do we use m to represent slope and b to represent the y-intercept? Uh, and to be honest, nobody's 100% sure about this. Um, some people think that the m comes from the word um, Monte, which is climb in French, because this type of math was uh, examined a lot by a French uh, mathematician named René Descartes. Uh, another, um, another thought is that it might stand for the word montage, which comes from the word mountain. Um, but then other people just say, well, you know what, early um, when they're writing about this type of math in American textbooks, Whoever was writing it used M and B to describe the slope and the y-intercept, and that just kind of stuck. So we're not 100% sure why, um, but from now on, moving forward um, in this course and in your future math courses, um, when you hear when you see the variable M, you'll know that we're talking about slope, and when you see the variable B, you'll know that we're talking about the y-intercept of the line. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on or we're going to look at strategies on how to take equations of lines and come up with a graph to represent that equation or that representation or to model that representation of a line. And uh, the strategy we're going to focus on today is called the table of values method. So we're going to start with kind of a practical example, and then we'll move into one that's a little bit more algebraic or mathy. Okay, so. Again, we're looking at using tables of values to graph linear or to graph lines. And from a practical, for a practical example, we're going to look at the cost of a gym membership again. So we have a gym membership. Uh, it's modeled by using the equation C equals 10M plus 50, where C is the cost and M is the number of months going to the gym. And we want to sketch this relationship. So first of all, uh, when I see the equation C equals M plus 50, I can tell a couple things right off the bat. Um, so for example, that um, it's 10 M, which means it's $10 per month. So I can see the rate of change is gonna be 10. And then taking on to the end is this 50. It has no variable on it, so it always stays 50, which makes me think that's the initial value. So I've got the rate of change is $10 per month, and I've got the initial, value of $50. So I'm going to keep that in mind um, at the end when I'm checking my graph to see if I've done it correctly. Um, my independent variable is m, which is the number of months, and my dependent variable is c, which is the cost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table of values, and in that table of values I'm going to generate points that I can use to sketch this relationship. So I always write my independent variable first in table of values. So my x value or my m number of months is going to be my first column. And my y value or my dependent variable, in this case cost, is going to be my second column. Now I'm in control of looking at the number of months. So I'm going to pick some numbers to, um, to look at. So um, because I always want to get the initial value or see the initial value in my linear relationship when I'm modeling real life situations, I started at zero, and then I chose one, two, three, four. So we're going to look at calculating the costs for going to the gym for these different numbers of months. Okay, so I picked these numbers, and then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the cost associated with those numbers. And when I'm doing this, I always like to just do my rough work on the side if I need to, so that way it doesn't get in, um, it doesn't get in kind of the middle of my uh, of my points here. 
So I'm going to start off with uh, when the number of months equals zero. So if the number of months equals zero, I'm going to go to my equation and I know that C is equal to 10M plus 50. So when the number of months is zero, I'm going to go to my rough work here, the cost is going to be equal to 10 times zero plus 50, which is just 50. And that's what we already said our initial value was going to be. So that makes sense. Zero um, months is going to be $50. So when the number of months is 1, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug in 1 from my M. So 10 times 1 plus 50 gives me 60. So for one month, it's going to cost $60. I'm going to do the same thing for 2. 10 times 2 plus 50 is 70. So 2 months is going to cost me $70. Uh, 10 times 3 plus 50 is equal to 80. So 3 months is going to cost me $80. And then from there, I should start to see a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a pattern. So if you look here, 50 to 60 is 10. Uh, 60 to 70, we're increasing by 10. 70 to 80, we're increasing by 10. So I know that when I go from three months to four months, I'm also going to increase by 10, which also connects back to my rate of change, right? So I now have a table of values. I've picked my x values I've, or my independent values to plug in. I calculated my dependent values to go with them, and now I have a bunch of points that I can sketch on my graph, okay? So I've created my graph over here, and I just wanna point out a few things. First of all, the independent variable is my x, and it always goes on the horizontal axis. So on my horizontal axis, I put the number of months. Um, and then you'll notice I needed to go to at least four, so to kind of spread it out, I chose to have two blocks, of my graph be one month. So I went two blocks, one, two blocks, two, two blocks, three, two blocks, four, and so on. Um, and that spread it out nicely over my grid. Um, for the cost, um, that's my second column in my table of values. It's my dependent variable, and the dependent variable should always go on the y-axis or the vertical axis for a properly drawn graph. So I've labeled it cost, I've put my units because it's in dollars, and here the numbers are a little bit bigger. Um, I want to get to at least 90 and if not a little bit more. So I chose to skip count by tens for my scale. So I went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on all the way up to 200. And I didn't worry about writing every single one. I just wrote out every um, other one just to save myself a little bit of time. Okay, um, I also put a title on my graph and now I've set it all up so that I can sketch my points or plot my points on the graph. So at zero months, the cost is 50. So I go to zero months and I go up to 50 and I plot that point. So there's my initial value, zero 50. At one month, the cost is 60. So I go over to one, I go up to 60 and there's my point 160. Two months cost me 70. So 270 is another point. 380 is another point. 490 is another point, and really that's all I need because if you look here, um, I know this is a linear relationship because it's in the form y equals mx, or sorry, y equals the rate of change times x plus the initial value. And sure enough, when I plot my points, they line up to be a straight line. So I know that if they've lined up to be a straight line, um, that I've done it correctly. And um, a good rule is to, uh, if you're drawing, doing a table of values or drawing a line, Always choose at least three points just to make sure that you can see that you've done your calculations properly and that they line up to actually be linear. So I took my ruler, I drew a line through the points so I can see the relationship between the number of months and the cost of my um, of my gym membership. And now I can use my line to make some predictions. So I can say, okay, well, what would it be for nine months? Well, nine months looks like it's probably going to be about 140 and so on. Okay. So there's, um, this is an example of how to do a table of values from a practical example. And we're just gonna extend that then to help us draw a table of values for a more mathy example. So what we're gonna do this time is we're just gonna graph the line y equals negative two x plus four. And you'll notice that my, my grid here um, is more of a Cartesian plane. So I've got the positive and negative y's and the positive and negative x's. Uh, so we have, a full plane here with a f with four quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, and four, and we're going to take this linear relationship and we're going to sketch it on the line or on the on the um, Cartesian plane. 
So um, again, I can look at this and kind of get some ideas of what might be going on here. So I see the negative two is attached to my X. So that makes me think that the rate of change or the slope is gonna be negative two. Uh, that means it's, when I see the, the negative there, I'm thinking it's gonna go down to the right. Um, and then tagged on here, I have this plus four. So that makes me think that the initial value, um, or in this case, the Y intercept should be about four. So when we do our table of values, we'll take a look um, to see if those things are in fact true. So just like before, I'm going to set myself up a table. My independent variable x always goes first and my dependent variable y always goes second. I am going to pick my x values because I'm in control of my independent variable here. So um, because we're looking at a different uh, Cartesian plane here, I always like to pick a few x values that are negative. I always like to get zero on there because I want to see where that um, y-intercept is. And then um, I like to pick a few positive x values. So I chose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And what I want to do is I want to take these x values, plug them into this equation to figure out the y values that go with them, and again, use that to generate points. So when x is equal to negative 2, I'm going to plug in negative 2 into my equation. I get negative 2 times negative 2 plus 4. I know that's equal to 8. So I've got a point at negative 2, 8. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. So when x is equal to negative 1, the y value is going to be 6. At 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0 plus 4 equals 4. So 0, 4. At 1, I get negative 2 times 1 um, plus 4 equals negative 2. And at 2, I get negative 2 times 2 plus 4 is equal to 0. So now I have a list here of um, points. Again, I did my rough work on the side just to keep this uh, table of values nice and clean so it doesn't get crowded or uh, confusing um, because this lets me see now the nice um, points that I'm going to plot on my graph. So I'm going to start with this one, negative 2, 8. So I'm going to go to my grid, I'm going to start at 0, I'm going to go back 2 on the x, and I'm going to go up 8 on my y. And you'll notice that this point is a little bit off the grid. So I just put a little mark there to show that it's there, but I'm probably not going to actually draw that in my line. Um, so I'll go to the next point, negative 1, 6. So I'm going to go back 1 on the x, and I'm going to go up 6 on the y. So there's my, my uh, point right there. And then I go 0, 4. So you see um, when x equals 0, or when the independent variable is 0, that's where you're going to get your y-intercept. And sure enough, the y-intercept is 4, just like we thought it would be from looking at the equation. Uh, at 1, I've got a point at a y-value of 2. So there's a point 1, 2. And then I've got the point 2, 0 right here. And again, uh, I know this is linear because it's in the form y equals mx plus b. And when I look at the points that we've generated, they form a line. Um, so I know I've done it correctly. And what I do at this point is I take my ruler, I put it across the grid, and I draw a line all the way through those points, and I extend it from one end of the grid to the other. So I don't want just a little short line segment here. I want a nice long line that goes all the way across the graph. Um, I put the arrows on each side of my line because I know that I could have chosen other values for x. So I could have chosen negative 6, for example, and I know that that would be kind of somewhere way up here. Um, or I could have chose positive 6, and that would have been kind of somewhere down here. So this line, depending on what values of x I choose, could extend on forever and ever and ever. So those arrows just show that it extends forever. And the other thing I did, uh, which is a good habit to get into, is I just labeled my lines. So um, this one's fine because I just have one line on this graph. But if I was drawing um, a bunch of lines on the same graph, you would want to make sure that the reader knows what line you're actually um, depicting. So right here, I just put a little tick off here and said that this is equal to, this is the line y equals negative 2x plus 4. So the reader knows what this line was that I was graphing. Okay. Um, so there's uh, how, I'm just going to go back out again. Um, there are some examples of how to sketch lines using a table of values. Um, so today's practice, I'd like you to practice this strategy. I want you to create tables of values using your equations and uh, use those tables of values to sketch your graphs. And then tomorrow we're going to look at another strategy for graphing lines um, without a table of values. There you go. Good luck.